I had a difficult time this week when I was asked to come and speak today. What am I going to say? <laughs> what am I going to say? Out of thought, out of thought, what am I going to say? After all, you have, to, you, know, you have to take full advantage, you know, when you have a captive audience. Um, I guess my message is to, to the young people. Pay attention. This is the message everywhere I go. You've got to pay attention as a young person. Build your subjectivity. Build your awareness. Your consciousness. You gotta know the world in which we live. This morning when we did a sweat lodge, we had a special guest with us and it was um, somebody who also was influenced by uh, Martin Luther King. Is we had the grandson of Cesar Chavez came and joined us for our sweat lodge ceremony. Of course he, uh, in the Latino community, in the farm worker community, he also practiced um, the non-violence. And, and so Martin Luther uh, King the, his influence spilled over to a bunch of folks, a bunch of people. So it's, it's not just the black community, it's, it's across the board like that. As natives, we, we kind of feel like we're the hosts. Like this is, this is us here, this is our host. Historically, we've always welcomed the Africans into our community. We sheltered the Africans, the runaways, people. There's no no documented case in our history of any de deportation. Any of the runaways that came, we, we accepted them. We brought them into our community. We crossed our bloodlines with you. In fact, um, a high, there's a high percentage in the African-American community that has native blood, right? And so that's kind of a, a kind of under-theorized, under-discussed, but our, our bloodlines are crossed like that. They've been crossed for a long time. And so our fate is your fate. Your fate is my fate. And so I want to participate in your liberation. And I expect you to participate in my liberation. And so that's why I'm here today, uh, to show that solidarity that we're together working like that. Um, critical consciousness. <laughs> the ability to perceive social, political, and economic oppression and take action against the oppressive elements of society. Based on my knowledge and what I know uh, of Dr. King, his entire adult life was dedicated to the poor, the meek, the humble, what uh, President Franklin D. Roosevelt once called the ill-housed, the ill-fed, and the ill-clothed. He worked, preached, marched, went to jail, suffered physical attack, and even gave his life for us for the poor and the downtrodden folk. He didn't have to do it. He did not have to do it. Neither did his service to others nor his dedication to a larger cause just happen automatically. He did it because he had a consciousness. He paid attention. Um, and when he was a young person, his, he, he really paid attention. The poverty and, and injustice that he witnessed, and he, he chose not to ignore it. It sickened him, right? Injustice especially irritated him. The economic plight and racial injustice of too many of, of his followers depressed Dr. King. He had only to look around him to see the effects of years of injustice and malnutrition on his people. Your people, our people, my people. Children whose growth was stunted because of an inadequate diet. Tenant farmers' wives wearing clothes made out of flour sacks and feed sacks, children wearing hand-me-down clothes year after year after year. Just some of the things that put him in a constant state of depression. The way Dr. King saw it, human rights and economic rights went hand in hand. If indeed they were not one and the same. The way he saw it, a hungry man may not be too interested in anything other than obtaining food. Dr. King indicated that a man might gain the right to eat at a cafe counter but what good was it if he could not afford to pay for something to eat? Some of the experiences that shaped his philosophy from kind of reading and learning about his life over my life, growing up detesting not only segregation, but also the oppressive and barbarous acts that grew out of it, passing the places where black folk had been savagely lynched, watching the KKK on its night rides, 
seeing police brutality with his own eyes, seeing the black folk receive the most tragic injustice in the court system. These are all, no matter how you spin it or describe it, violence. It's forms of violence. Violence to his fellow man for whatever cause was repulsive to him. What I'm describing is, is education. Education is the most noble path for us as humans. This is our path. To educate, to be educated, to be truly human means educated. And I'm not saying the education that comes necessarily between and betwixt the walls of a classroom. Unfortunately, we're not there yet. The education we're receiving within the classroom is not enough. It's, it's not enough. We have to learn our history, learn our history, learn each other's history. We have to go outside, unfortunately, go outside the, the current curriculum, the school curriculum if we really, really want to educate ourselves. So we make a distinction between schooling and education. Right? There's a difference. Schooling is what we do is we, we kidnap kids and we force them to sit there during the school day and we do things to them. Some good, some bad. I'm not criticizing all of schooling. Right? But that's different than education. Right? And we got to learn the difference. In Dr. King's words, educational context and associations extend far beyond the classroom into school buses, lunch rooms, playgrounds, pools, and gymnasiums. Education is an obstacle course to be surmounted. Education must enable one to sift and weigh evidence, to discern the truth from the false, the real from the unreal, the facts from the fiction. The function of education, therefore, is to teach one to think intensively and think critically. And if you're not getting educated in the classroom, then get it yourself. Right? My advice to you, to young folk, surround yourself by the elders. That's the advice. Go talk to your elders. Surround yourself by the elders. Learn from your elders. They lived it. They lived the history. They know the history. That, that's my advice to you all. Um, there's a simultaneous moment that takes place. Um, I guess what I want is, and, and uh, what I think is important for us is to awaken, to wake up to our oppression. To me, that's a main thing, wake up to our oppression, right? Because when you wake up to your oppression, there's a simultaneous moment. When you realize something that didn't exist there before, the aha moment. Right? A possibility that you didn't see there before. Right? It happens at the same time. Something liberatory. Right? We all want liberation. We want freedom. That's, that's, that ultimately, that's what we want. To be who we are. Right? Without judgment. Without brutality. Without fear. We just want to be who we are. The next steps are leadership and action. Organizing is the next logical step to revolutionary thinking and writing. And leadership and action, that's what Martin gave us. <clears throat> that's what he gave us, leadership and action. Economic stagnation was bad enough on its own, but when it was coupled with racial injustices, it seemed utterly hopeless. Dr. King set out to alleviate both the economic bondage and racial injustice. It was and continues to be a two-front war in the truest sense. So as we state, no justice, no peace, the question for 2016 is, is this the year we finally had enough? Is 2016 finally the year that we've had enough? That's what I, I'm asking. So young folk, tell me what you see. Us older people are relying on you. We're relying on your vision. Maybe we have some of the wisdom, maybe we have some of the knowledge as people who've lived a little bit longer on this planet. But there's a heavy weight on you young people. We're looking towards you, believe it or not. You would think it would be the opposite, but no. High school, college, and university, university campuses are, is a good place to start. Think about going to college 
and not just going to college for a career. Think about college as a boot camp. Learn how to organize, learn history, take a, a mapping of your community. Our community has its own funds of knowledge. Funds, funds of knowledge that don't exist in the textbooks. We have to go outside the textbooks to, fund, to, to find out and learn about those funds of knowledge. Education is of economic imperative and the civil rights issue of our generation. Right? Education is our current civil rights agenda. It's a right, not a privilege. For the purpose of broader context, the competitive strength of the U.S. and the global economy depends and will continue to depend to a large extent on the positive educational outcomes of you all. A citizenry equipped to compete in the global economy, part of a literate and well-educated labor and consumer base, a pool of linguistic and cultural talent, a significant component of a highly productive work and business force that contributes to the tax base and therefore the economic well-being of the United States, and poised to participate and shape the U.S. political landscape through voting and civic, civic engagement. Yes, we compete in a global economy, but what I'm asking you today is don't do so blindly. I'm asking you to fight against a number of obstacles. Fight against the lack of awareness that we are oppressed. Fight against the lack of solidarity among the oppressed people. Fight against the loss of a common tradition of democracy and human rights. And fight against the indifference of oppressed people to their situation. Pay attention, lead us. Help us open our eyes and our hearts to the terrible human costs, the rising unemployment in our home economies, slave wages where manufacturing is relocated, runaway immigration, and a constant degradation of the environment. Excellence, equity for all, justice for the greater good, truth, compassion, dignity, humility, service, empowerment, strengthening of community, diversity, building of bridges, and creating solutions to social problems. That's our task. That's your task. Change cannot happen until you make it happen. Si se puede. Thank you for inviting me. I want to go ahead and present to you as a gift. Oh, okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Very, very good. Thanks. Thank you. And can we go ahead and give him another round of applause, please?